Hello, for today's single malt review, we'd like to talk to you about evolution. Don't worry, I'm not turning into one of those YouTube channels. We're talking about the evolution of one particular and quite remarkable dram over the course of several years. Mm. It was brought to you quite evidently by Mingus's behind as he uh, anoints anoints our boxes most thoroughly. I think that's quite enough there, Mingus. There we go, there we go, there we go. go. Mm. And he's off. Excellent. All right, well, if you hadn't guessed it, this is the infamous final whiskey of the day slot. Mm. So um, buckle in. There's always exciting times ahead. Um, as Dave was saying, this is something of an evolution. An evolution of an evolution. Way back in the day, 2016, in fact, back when we were sort of um, just starting out, we took a look at the then newly reformulated Buna Harbor, yeah. 12 years old. It had gone from a really arguably pretty dreary 40% whiskey with yeah, a pretty, pretty intangential identity to it, and they had reformulated to a uncolored, unchill filtered 46 for Point some reason, three. 0.3% Percent. version. Yeah. And there was much celebration um, amongst the amongst the whiskey connoisseurs yeah. across the road because it made Bunnhaben an interesting whiskey. Mm. Now this fun. is a 2013 bottling, or at least it was purchased 2013. It was gifted to me that same year by some rather excellent people. And uh, yeah, so we reviewed this over well, very nearly three years ago. But now though, now though, we are going to take a second look. Mm. One because this was on Super Special, and I really like me some Bunnhaben 12. Two because upon tasting it, I realised that there has been evolution all along in yeah. the background. This is um, well, other than the fact that they have gone round and mm. a bit more um, nouveau with their packaging. Uh, taxonomically, this is the same. This is another unchill filtered, uncoloured. 46.3% whiskey, as well as we'll see here, the bottles aren't that dissimilar yeah. once we get the packaging out of the way. Sadly, I've recently finished the very last smidge of the older circa 2013 Buna 12 year old, so we won't be able to do a true side-by-side -side taste test. However, yeah, you can see the transformation in the artwork. It's subtle, but it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's noticeable. They have streamlined things a little, simplified somewhat. But more to the point, the whiskey has yeah. changed, and it has changed for the better. Uh, this, the 2013 bottling, was good. Compared to the old 40% version, it was phenomenal. But things have kept moving, not mm. quite at the same pace, but um, this blend has been refined in the years between, and I want to take another look at it now, because I think, um, though it's a, uh, you'd define this as a re-review, we finally got there after three years of um, <laughs> reviewing whiskies, uh, incidental though it may be, I think it's really worth a re-review, because I think this is a whisky that has changed, and changed for the better, so it's a really positive re-review as yeah. well. I'll um, pour us a wee dram of this one, and give you a bit of... Um, but I have in facts that I neglected to give you the last time. See, we're way more, way more professional <laughs> these days. Still, possibly what the only strictly unpeated space? Uh, mm. Sorry, Isla whiskey. Well, because they're they're neither strictly unpeated, uh -huh. nor are they, nor are they. Well, I guess they're strictly unpeated. Um, there was a much more elegant way to way to bring that all home. Um, there are other non-peating whiskies on space sides. Right. Um, they're oh, not. Right. Sorry, I had yeah, set the ball rolling on yeah, air. You, you, you did too. Last whiskey, folks. Here it is, live live demo. Um, uh, Brooklady also makes unpeated ah, yes. malt. Um, so that sort of muddies the water a wee bit there. I think Bonnehaven are far more famous for it, because I think Brooklady makes a lot more hay with its PC Port Charlotte range these days, which is yeah. very heavily peated. I don't think anyone's too interested in regular Laddy, um, ever since the old and famous Brooklady 10 sort of fell by the wayside and turned into a significantly less interesting um, no age statement bottling. But anyway, enough about those guys. Mm. Um, Bunnahabhan, I said I had some facts for you, and I do, as I glance towards my wee book here, um, and then turn the page, because I did the um, ones on a different page. I'll oh, bugger it, I'll just remember it. Um, Bunnahabhan, it's uh, Gaelic for the mouth of the river, and it is neighbours in the northeast. See, I'm take good at this, just off, off from complete memory. Um, northeast of the Isla Coast and its neighbours with Colila and just about nobody else. So it's very, very close to Jura up the northeast there. Jura's just, just over here. Um, 
which means very little, but um, that, that it is where it is, and it doesn't have too many neighbours. It's not like that big parking lot of distilleries down on the south coast where you've got, you know, Ardberg, Lagerwillen, Lefroig, um, they've all just jammed up in there. Uh, no, it's a fairly, fairly scant area of distilling up there, but it doesn't share a great deal in common with Colina. Colina only makes peated whiskey, as far as I've ever been able to track it down. Bunnehaven almost only makes unpeated whiskey, mm. and that really does set it apart. Um, they do have peated versions. They're, um, what do they call them? Totiech, Totiech, something entirely unpronounceable. Um, is a fully peated version. The regular Bunnehaven, as it's always been, is, as you get it from the first whiff, practically unpeated. It's a bit like an old Pultney situation. It's maritime, it's sort of got a salty, savoury, um, driftwoody character, but it is not really None to pick up on it. Peated. Peat. There yeah. will be a peating level in here, but it will be extremely, extremely subtle. Just like there is a peating level in some mainland whiskies, mm. there is a peating level in um, Crag and Moor. Mm. Could not be further from Isla, and yet they do include a tiny bit of peated malt in their, in their mash there. And this is not a dissimilar situation. Um, this whisky is very, very balanced. Um, it comes from almost every conceivable angle and meets in the middle in a way that I think is really, really good and much, much better, much better than the previous one. I'm going to have a wee, like, draw on this one to see if mm -hmm. I can... No, alas, there's nothing. It's not alive. There are some vapours left, yeah. but not enough there, to the, the vapors, I, I can't discern anything from the vapours, so we'll just have to let that, yeah. let that lie there. But what I am discerning is... Mm. Toffee apples. For me, yeah. first and foremost... This whisky is all mm. about... Toffee, honey, and it's all about nuts. Yeah. Really, really super duper all about mm. nuts. There is sort of roasted... Oh, there's cashew, there's pecan, mm. there's walnut. There's even a little bit of peanut in the back there. It's quite savoury. Yeah, that's savory. something I kind of think of as sort of carnival food. Back, this is taking me back to probably primary school. was the last time I actually ate a toffee apple, if any degree of earnest. Mm. And, no, well, that's, that's quite nostalgic. I think the biggest difference from this one to the other here is that this one has a lot more sherry in it. Mm. It's a very, very balanced whiskey. Most whiskies, you can almost see it in the colour. If you look at that, mm -hmm. that tint of gold you will just not see in any bourbon matured whiskey. It simply doesn't have the tannins there, it doesn't have the colour that it can impart. Um, that is the colour you can only get, assuming you're not dosing it up, um, from that European mm. oak, and they really, really have it going here. This is one of the few whiskies which is almost in balance with its bourbon notes and its sherry notes, which makes it really, really, really rare because so, so few, I can't even think of one. Can you think of one that's, think of a whiskey which is, um, uses both in its maturation mm. and yet represents both equally. I almost can't bring one to mind. There are sherry distilling Distilleries, Glen Farkness, Glendronach, so on. There are bourbon ones, practically everybody else. Uh, but the two often don't meet hmm. quite so succinctly in the middle as this one. So yes, honey, um, toffee, nuts, really, really quite sweet. The only savoury elements come from the salt, and there is quite a salty tang on this. Mm. Just gilding the edge. It's gentle, but enough to be noticeable. And on the palate. Oh, that is quite splendid. There's an initial strong salted caramel hit. Mm. It gives way to sea salt and then dissolves into those sweet fruits, toffees, and a nice honeyed nut finish. Mm. As much as the not smoke, but maritime character comes in on the nose. It absolutely comes through on the palate. Mm. Um, Actually, I'm getting a distinct finish now of mussels, pickled mussels. There you go, mm. all kinds of... That's... that's I mean, that, there's well, only one place that can come from, that's Isla Peat yeah. as well. So that that reveals that there is some peated malt in here, even though there is maybe mm. not be quite a lot, or the peating level may be astonishingly low, there is. It's a very distinctly seafoody finish rather yeah. than uh, peaty or smoky, per uh, se. 
Despite how it may be very, very far from the norm, it is still an Isla whiskey, as it always has been. Yeah. Mmm. And it's extremely, extremely complex. There is nuts here, there is fruit. Fruit less so than the nuts. The nuts are very dominant. These honey roasted nuts, particularly. There's even a little bit of caramel popcorn in there mm -hmm. um, for aficionados of that particular um, lethal dessert. Um, this comes from so many different directions and manages to meet in the middle and mm. land it as well. It, it, it achieves the sort of slam dunk and brings these flavors together in a way that few other distilleries even attempt rather than really bring it home. The original one, we initially thought that one was quite weird, and it was quite weird. It had this odd sort of a tang to it, and the sherry flavours kind of came in in an odd way that was, it was notable enough to be a bit peculiar. In this iteration, all these years on, it is perfectly, perfectly integrated. Um, and that makes a huge difference to the whiskey. It's whiskey that sort of found its vibe, I guess. Mm. It knows where it wants to be. It's discovered its new identity and it's really, really living it. It is a curiously perfect meeting point between the sweet and savoury, between the maritime and the terrestrial, for want of a better word. I could go for a little water as well, actually. Thank you. See what it does. Mm. This, this is not an experiment I've tried. It is a whiskey that's so keenly, keenly balanced on its own. I've been afraid to put whiskey in, uh, whiskey in, water in, that's uh, whiskey folk. Um, but now that we're doing this as a more of a scientific exercise, I feel mm. a bit better about doing it. Hmm. Mm. Oh, that has softened a lot of the salty maritime properties. Yeah. It has brought the fruits and the spices it's to the fore. fruity now, which could have mm. been, we could have predicted that coming it's in. It's anticipated the bourbon cask influences significantly, I think. A lot more citrus, a lot more oak. Though that has ultimately, I think, made it a more flavoursome whiskey, it has knocked the balance out of centre, and it has, I think, for such a honed whiskey, mm. it wasn't really ready. It wasn't prepared for adding water there. It has, it hasn't, I'm loath to say that it's killed it, because it hasn't. It just has changed it, and for something that was so precisely, it's like one of those magnetic ornaments which just sort of hovers there. Um, any, any sort of um, input of force from any direction will cause it to completely fall off. And it hasn't fallen off, but it has completely changed. This is now a very fresh, very fruity whiskey. The maritime character is now sort of been run over by these more bombastic fruits that have come out. Hmm. In no way unenjoyable, just not quite the exercise and balance that it was at its, uh, well not natural, but as its authored strength, I suppose. Um, this I think is good in a way that is quite difficult mm. to describe. You can say something's balanced, but that doesn't really do justice to the ways in which it is balanced. It doesn't describe the nature of the balance. It doesn't describe how all the parts are weighing together and sort of coming to meet in the middle in this sort of perfect fusion of different flavours. Um, it's just something that's very, very difficult to do, especially in a you know, short session as we produce. But it is, and you'll just have to take my word for it, one of the most keenly balanced whiskies I think I've ever encountered. Yeah, so the balance is good, but this manages to balance quite such strong... Uh, flavors which are so at odds with each other. Normally when you have a balanced whiskey you might have a fairly narrow spectrum of flavors that meet in the middle nicely. This takes two sort of radical outliers and manages to achieve an equilibrium which is entirely satisfying. Yeah, it is, um, it's an achievement. Yeah. I'm trying to find more hyperbolic terminology because mm -hmm. I'm going to give this a very very high score right. and I want to sort of just you know just just pad my landing so that um, I have somewhere to land once I'm I'm justly criticised. This is 93 point whiskey. This wow. is an achievement um, 
the likes of which you don't often see. This is not a whiskey that is fantastic because of what it is, it's fantastic because of what it's made to be. In terms of the output of a blender's art, in terms of how something is pieced together out of different aspects of a distillery's output, this is getting into masterpiece mm. territory. It is just so well pieced together in a way that you don't often see. Do you, do you have any, what have, what have you, what is it coming out with you? Well, this one is going to score higher for me compared to the older counterpart as well. I must confess I have not re-watched our review of the older edition of the 12 year old. I very rarely watch our reviews in full, so I'm going on my recollections. I recall this one is a very good dram. It is an entirely tasty 12 year old, and it's good being an, a virtually unpeated Isla whiskey as well. It's unique in that respect. But this current incarnation of it uh, pushes the envelope in a few more directions. It takes uh, some risks and uh, delivers some challenges and for me that makes it it's uh, overall an even more enjoyable experience for 89 points from me. Yeah, it's a whiskey that as Dave mentioned right at the outset is still evolving Yeah, and um, I would be perfectly happy to revisit this one in another couple of years mm. just to see if they've even if they've been able to maintain um, I would be quite impressed to see if they've been able to double up on the success of this one. What I need to do now is, there is an 18 year old version of this and I really, oh, yeah. really must track it down because mm. um, this I think has a lot more to do with the old Bernhaben 18 than um, the the original, well, the original reformulated 12, which is getting oh, a bit complex. We did once try a 16 year old um, single cask Bernhaben from Signature. Yes. No, trying single cask, that's almost sort of cheating, I suppose, because that's just a little a snapshot into yeah. a snapshot into um, just one sort of microscopic corner of their warehouse where there as this is a sort of a symphony derived from the whole the whole lot of it. Um, and it really has been done perfectly. As perfectly as you can with twelve year old whiskey in this particular particular one. I am quite, quite taken with it. So um, that has been the present iteration of Bernhaben 12 years old, everybody. I hope you didn't expect anything uh, more or less profound from our last whiskey of the day. We normally try to bring out something really shonky so that we can sort of um, fall over ourselves and um, delete it if we have to, but uh, simply it was not available, so we had to do a good one instead. So I hope that worked out for everybody. Let us know if it did or did not in the comments. And indeed, like and subscribe, as they say, the mantra of YouTube. Um, or don't, we don't. It's fine. It's fine. Um, we're going to do this for fun, as we all should. So, yes. I hope you're having plenty of whiskey fun out there. We will be back next time for something exhilarating, I can only assume, mm. based on our normal um, razzmatazz. And we will be back with that very, very shortly. Slandra, keep safe. We'll be right back.